All right, let's start in New York in Rockland County, where the fight over East Rampo's sectarian school district is expanding. The district, which is unlike any other in the state, located about 30 miles north of New York City, and the school administration and nine-member school board run by Orthodox Jewish and Hasidic men. School board has been blamed for, among other things, financial mismanagement, and now the state finally has decided to step in. It's appointed a fiscal monitor to oversee the district's finances, and a letter addressed to superintendent of the school says, quote, the department remains concerned about the district's history of and continued signs of fiscal distress. Going on to say, as a result, it's become necessary for the department to appoint a fiscal monitor to serve the district in an advisory capacity in order to ensure the district is able to provide an appropriate educational program and properly and properly manage an account for state and federal funds received. Now, this comes after calls from an interfaith clergy group and dozens of others who said the district has been creating educational disadvantage for many children, most notably minorities. You think this is a long overdue uh, decision? I think it's a good decision, and I think, frankly, the board of East Ramapo Post should embrace it. Uh, because any doubts or questions should be answered. And I think it's the right thing to do to ensure, and this has always been the issue, that the children who do go to public schools, and for that matter, those who do not, yep. get the right resources in the, in the proper way. So I think it's good, and I, my hope is um, that as a result of this advisory capacity that things can change for the better. It might be an out also for some of the group if they choose to let a third party take it over, then... Uh, is it uh, maybe allows a little safe facing? Well, it does, and as I've said to you uh, at the, on this program, I tried to get the different uh, sides together. There are several sides, sure. but trying to get uh, particularly the people um, of color, the community, uh, the immigrants uh, who are there, uh, along with um, the school board and its leaders, and it's very difficult. This may be a way to neutralize, essentially, a neutral party to help out. If a monitor doesn't work, is there another step? Can the state actually take over the school board or take over the district? I believe it can. Remember that the state board, state trustees, trustees of Board of Education are actually state representatives, mm -hmm. uh, and, and therefore they can be removed or they can be, uh, uh, things can change and they can take over the education uh, for the district. Um, but I think you'd have to find a, you know, a, a, an ongoing right. parent, uh, you know, uh, I guess miscue of the, of the appropriate actions uh, by the board with respect to public education. Richard, something has to give. It, it's just not fair. I mean, you, you, have, you have a situation where, and the Hasidim, they have every right to be on the school board. And, and their people turn out and vote. But you have a all, mostly all Hasidim board with a black and Latino school district, and somehow the public dollars are going for Hasidim children education, but not the majority of what should be fully for the kids that are in the district. These are public taxpayer dollars, and they are selling schools, as I've said before, for $1 to their cronies and their buddies, and the deal was blocked. The feds are going to have to come in on this You one. guys know it's better than me, but something has to be done because this is starting to simmer into some, uh, it's been simmering for a while here, but this, uh, you could have a really unfortunate situation if somebody doesn't get involved. All right, now let's get to the case of embattled state senator Malcolm Smith, accused of uh, trying to bribe his way onto the Republican line for May. You may remember that story. Well, today, get this. Federal judge declared a mistrial on this case. Not enough jurors willing to serve more than a month longer than expected to resolve issues with those secret recordings by the government star witness. Many of the recorders couldn't even be translated because the conversations were in Yiddish. Smith and his uh, co-defendant, former uh, Queens Vice Chairman Vincent Tabone, will now have a new trial on January 5th. Can't make this stuff up, Dominic. No, you can't make it up. Uh, if you're Malcolm Smith, um you're on your knees praying tonight. He really caught a break. That doesn't mean at the end of the day he's going to walk away. And he is running for re-election up against a well-funded uh, opponent that has the backing of the entire Democratic establishment. So he may win today but lose tomorrow with the re-election battle. Real quickly, Andrew, what, do, what should people know about medical marijuana in Albany? Uh, there has been some alteration to the bill, but Governor Cuomo has come out and said that he won't sign it because it doesn't, I think, prohibit the use of smoked marijuana in the medical marijuana process. Uh, so Cuomo's now threatening a veto. It doesn't look like it's going to have the muscle to get through the state Senate either, uh, even though there might be enough votes to pass it if it came up for a vote. So it's going to get sort of shuffled off to the side. Did they simply think the government the was going along? Did they think he I was think they thought that there was enough public sentiment for this thing, and the numbers are in the 70s in yeah. the latest polls that support it. So... There's, and again, it would pass the Assembly and it would pass the Senate if it actually got up for a vote. This is being blocked 
out of being a vote. And this is one of, I mean, I think it should be legalized. And, and uh, I, to me, this is just one of those stupid maneuvering things that people don't want to be on the wrong side of this position coming exactly. into the election. Um, you know, one thing can, you can always count around this time of year when you've got the NHL and the NBA finals that all come to a head. The mayors of the two cities involved, regardless of the sports, come up with some dopey bet here. Um, and, uh, you know, it's pretty cheesy. Governor Cuomo certainly uh, to blame. But Bill de Blasio at least paid up on his bet with uh, late night talk show host Jimmy Kimmel. Again, he pledged. Uh, that whichever lost, they had to sing the other city song, either I Love New York or I Love L.A. Well, Rangers, as we know, lost. And Mr. de Blasio went on Kimmel, and here goes. Well, thank you, first of all, for making good on your bet. You're a, a strong man for doing that. Well, Jimmy, we New Yorkers honor our bets, but I don't have that great a singing voice, so I've got some friends here to help me out. These are the kids from the 52nd Street Project here in Manhattan. <laughs> And they're going to help us do this. You ready, guys? From, from the South, South Bay to, to the Valley, from the West Side to the East Side, everybody's very happy because the sun is shining all the time. It's like another perfect day. I love L.A. We love it. I go with a, maybe a looser-fitting T-shirt and... Uh, <laughs> get the kids around him a little bit, you know, so he's not standing on an island there. But, uh, hey, he paid up at least, but you wouldn't have liked to have made that bet, would you? Keep his day job, though. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm mad at the Rangers. I, mean, I, now I wish they could go back and win this thing so we could unsee that. <laughs> Dominic, I said, i got to put this on my iPod. But hey, yeah, Richard, yeah. I, I'm going to see the mayor in about 15 minutes, and you know what I'm going to ask oh, him, please, right? Please, ask him to sing it for you. <laughs> but don't record it. I don't want to hear it. All right, coming up next year. Most, uh, we're talking all-time American crowd watched yesterday's first game with the U.S. Yes, won our uh, first uh, game in the World Cup here, beating Ghana. We're going to tell you not just on the roller coaster ride of the fans here, but really amazing metric here. We'll show you how Twitter went nuts here when the U.S. pulled this thing out. See what's.